What's really good, bozos, and welcome to another episode of the Weekly NBA Breakdown. Let's take a look at some of the best NBA storylines that I found across the internet. Starting with Steve Kerr's doppelganger. Have you seen this shit? Dude is looking like a high school chemistry teacher who gets sturdy with the basketball team. And he pulls up to a Warrior game like nobody's gonna notice. Are you serious? On the Pat Bev podcast, him and Roan were talking about the top five least white, white NBA players. Now, this is a list I really love to talk about. And number five, Garrison Matthews of the Hawks, simply probably because he's all tatted up. Number four, Dante DiVincenzo. Chenzo, who brought some culture to his high school, let's not forget. And now in New York, he's a sniper. That's my brother. Number three, Alex Caruso. Alex Caruso is special. And always has carried himself with a certain level of swagger, so I hear that. And number two, Chet Holmgren. Y'all saw him coming to the league. Lanky doofus, but definitely got some swag about him. And number one, Tyler Hero. I feel like he's universally known as the white dude who's really not that white. But honorable mention, Austin Reeves, because for him to be able to play like that, they gotta have a little spice to him. That can't all be country. And of course, for me, TJ McConnell, who ultimately is just white Pat Bev. Draymond Green on his podcast says that Victor Wembanyama is a top 20 player in the league right now, which is not necessarily the hottest take in the world because the brother's unbelievable. But I love to see NBA vets giving flowers to the young guy, being able to look at a young player like that and be like, yeah, that young brother got next. He is special, absolutely special and he may win MVP of the league in like the next two years or so. Ben Simmons is out again for the Brooklyn Nets with his second back surgery in three seasons. He's only played 57 games and it's really, really tough to watch. Let's take a look at his highlight tape. <laughs> There's not many players in the league who can sit on a bench like Ben Simmons can. But all jokes aside, I still really want to believe in Ben. I mean, he was so good for such a long time, an all-star caliber player. I know a lot of you guys forgot about Philly Ben, but do your homework. Daniel Gafford hasn't missed a shot in five games. 33 straight field goals. Just a few away from tying Will Chamberlain's all-time record. Daniel Gafford. Oh! Nah, but all jokes aside, Daniel Gafford is nice. And to go from the armpit of the NBA that is the Wizards to hooping with Kyrie and Luka, it must be nice. After yet another big game by SGA in the Thunder, his post-game interview, they asked him, what exactly is it about him? that makes him so consistent. My whole life is consistent. Uh, everything I do. SGA is special, but him saying my whole life is consistent? That's a ball. I believe in the Thunder. Maybe not this year, but sometime soon. Paul Pierce was on Draymond Green's podcast asking about Draymond's farewell tour. Now I know we all remember when Draymond absolutely roasted Paul Pierce. Chasing that farewell tour, they don't love you like that. By 17, by 46. The truth is now looking to get some get back on Draymond. But Draymond, being the smart man that he is, knows damn well that he's not getting a farewell tour. So like the rest of his career, he's gonna hitch his wagon to Steph Curry and hopefully he'll get his tour there. Smart man. I know y'all saw LeBron James wishing Jeannie Buss a happy International Women's Day. He's so unintentionally funny. And you know damn well Savannah saw that clip and started asking LeBron, oh, you a comedian now? Oh, you funny? Watch your mouth. Anthony Edwards was talking that talk after a big comeback win against the Clippers. And after the game, they asked him, what did you see on the other side that made you able to do what you did today? Um, just a bunch of mismatches. Yeah, pretty much. Talk your shit, Ant. Until they can guard you, they can't say nothing. And finally, I know you saw the good brother CP3 give a ref a technical foul after he got a technical foul. Him giving out a tech after getting a tech, I mean, that's just the grumpiest shit I've ever seen. Get that brother a ring, please. Up next, of course, we have my top five highlights of the week. At number five, I got DeMar DeRozan forcing overtime against the Pacers. DeMar DeRozan consistently hitting big shot after big shot for the Chicago Bulls. And because of this shot alone, it pretty much locked him in for Clutch Player of the Year. At number four, we got some Luka Magic. Luka takes the ball to the wing, nutmegs Klay Thompson through his legs, bounce pass to Daniel Gafford, who goes up for one of his many consecutive field goals and dunks it home. Luka is different. At number three, we got Kelly Oubre against my New York Knicks. I hated to watch it, but I can't deny that this was absolutely special. Kelly Oubre is known to do things like this from time to time. I heart, get your get back next game. At number two, Andre Jackson of the Milwaukee Bucks. Oh, I couldn't tell you more than two or three players that were standing on the court at the time, being that this was a blowout, but Andre Jackson climbed the ladder on this putback dunk and his neck was at the rim. Shout out Andre Jackson. I'll probably forget your name by next week. And at number one, I gotta give it to one of the Warriors random mercenaries, Trace Jackson Davis, who put Wemby on a poster. I know Victor Wembanyama is averaging like three and a half blocks per game and NBA players love to dunk on these defensive players who get a lot of block, but 
let's be real. Victor Wembanyama is going to send your shit into the stands next time and probably throw it on your head on the other end. So don't get too excited, but it was a nice moment. Congratulations. And now it's time to break down the NBA playoff picture. What would happen if the playoffs started today? So as it stands right now, the play-in tournament would be out west, the Lakers versus the Warriors, and the Mavericks versus the Suns. Out east, the Bulls versus the Hawks, and the Pacers versus the Heat. Lakers, Warriors, I'm gonna have to go with the Lakers. I feel like the Lakers are just a little bit deeper. They're a little bit more talented. The Warriors dynasty is not over. I feel like they have made, they can move some pieces around and make some stuff happen, but I just don't think they got it this year, personally. Mavericks, Suns. I'm giving it to the Mavs. Luka is a man on a mission, so I imagine that he's gonna be able to pull that one out. Lakers Suns for that eight spot. I hate to do it to you, King, but you're not gonna make it. Those Suns, they're too talented. That's gonna be a lot to overcome. I don't think you're gonna be able to do it. Suns sneak in at eight. Bulls Hawks, I don't believe in the Bulls. So I think Trey Young in a, in a playoff do or die. Give us a nice 30 and 15. He moves the Hawks into the next round. Pacers Heat, playoff Jimmy, like winter, he's coming. Hawks Pacers. I got the Pacers over the Hawks. The Hawks are nice, but they're not there yet. Celtics Pacers. Celtics probably sweep them, no problem. The Knicks versus the Magic. The Magic are a great young team. They're a little too young, a little too inexperienced, and the Knicks are just a little too deep. I'm rocking with my Knicks. The Bucks versus the Sixers. Now, if the Sixers are still without Joel Embiid at this point, it won't even be close. And Doc Rivers is getting comfortable. The Bucks are only gonna get better, especially going into the playoffs. Cavaliers versus the Heat. Donovan Mitchell and them boys, they're talented. They're great, but the Heat are built for the playoffs, and I don't see a world where the Cavs are tough enough to handle that Heat culture. The Heat, they come through as the seventh seed, and they topple the two seed, and they move on to the next round. Nuggets versus Suns. This one is going to be a good, good series. Probably go six or seven games, but the Nuggets, they're champions. KD will have himself an incredible series, but the Suns are not going to have an answer for Jokic. Clippers, Pelicans. The Pelicans are good. They have a pretty good team. But the Clippers, man, they got four Hall of Famers on that squad. They need to get Russell Westbrook healthy, though, because him coming off the bench in that second unit provides a spark that no other team in the NBA has. Timberwolves, Kings. Now, this one's tough for me because the T-Wolves are playing out of their mind. But without Carl Anthony Towns, the Kings might be a little bit too formidable. I have to give it to the Kings if Carl Anthony Towns is not back. The Thunder versus the Mavericks. Now, this one... This one is gonna be good. I'm hoping that OKC, while young, still talented enough to be able to get over that hump, but like, can't count out Luka. I'm gonna say the Thunder win in six or seven games. Second round will be the Celtics versus the Knicks. I don't see a world where the Knicks beat the Celtics, at least right now. Could we beat them? Sure. Will we? I'll say Celtics are moving on, but the Knicks, I believe in you. Bucks versus the Heat. Now we saw what Heat culture did to the Bucks last year. That was demoralizing. So I think with Damian Lillard and a chip on Giannis' shoulder, they'll take out the Heat in six or seven games. But it won't be easy. Because like I said, playoff Jimmy is different. Nuggets Clippers. This one will go seven games. And I do see a world where the Clippers are going to win it. Having four guys on the wing who can do what those guys do, that's a matchup nightmare for any team. Clippers in seven. Sacramento Kings versus the Thunder in the semis. Sabonis so and Fox, they seem like they're on a mission. The numbers that they're putting up. I think that both teams are inexperienced, so that really won't come into play too much in this series. So I'm going to have to go with the Thunder just because I feel like they got the best player in the series. First time since KD was out there. Celtics versus the Bucks. I'm going to go with the Celtics here because the Bucks seem to me like unless they come into the series hot, that they're going to get smoked. I don't see the Celtics not making the finals this year. Clippers Thunder. This is where experience certainly comes into play. I'm going with the Clippers. Boston, LA. A tale as old as time, just a little twist on it this time. While I think the Celtics could win this series, I do think they fall short again. I got Clippers in seven. They're still the B team in LA, but at least they got a banner that they can hang up there with the Lakers banners. Let me know in the comments if you agree with my picks and let me know who you got winning the championship this year. And finally, it's time for the Daily Deuce. A safe space for us to shit on someone around the NBA who deserves it this week. And this week, there's no one more deserving than the Lakers organization. The Los Angeles Lakers recently unveiled their Kobe Bryant statue. And from far away, it looks like a statue that Kobe deserved and earned. But then you get a little bit closer. Jose Calderson, Vom Wafer, and Coach's Decision. What? I mean, they had one job. Maybe don't misspell something that's literally written in stone. I'm sure it was an honest mistake, but when the stakes are this high, somebody's getting fired. Lakers, fix the statue, get it together.
That's going to do it for this week's episode of the Weekly NBA Breakdown right here on the House of Highlights YouTube. I'm your boy, Deuce. I'll catch you next week. All love, top to bottom. You already know what it is. Peace.